Greetings, programs. This is Wretch. Welcome back to Tron Identity. And in the last episode, guys, we got to investigate the scene of the crime uh, where the vault was broken into. While there, we got to meet Cass, a, I guess, a guard program that was in the wrong place at the wrong time, at least at the moment. And we also got to talk to Sierra, the ambassador now captive being held in the library, who is very different from programs that we've seen in the Tron uh, mythos before. Very tall, very inhuman in a lot of ways. Like, doesn't have a whole lot to do with the users. Now, we went back up to talk to Prince to let him know what we found, and his memories are fragmented. So we are in the middle of trying to take care of that right now. So, unlock location, clear five cards of the same suit consecutively. So, let's try... Orange seems to be the best bet out of those. One. So these get blocked and we can't actually use them. And I think every time we clear something, the lock will change to a different part of the board. So we have got to be careful. There, you see? Three. And four, five. Now I need to make just the rest of this make sense somehow. Okay, let's go. Six and six. See, this will be fairly interesting to see if we can pull this off. That moving all over the place is strange. Target three. So I guess maybe we need to try and clear these out. Or use these. Now they're switching over. Doesn't look like there is a legal. Oh, wait, never mind. There is a legal move. Right here. Tell you what, let's have the AI help out. This is doable, maybe. Put the fives together. And then, like so. And we got the two zeros right there. And you decide just which one's going to be triumphant. Oh, we're going to be pressing our luck here. It looks like we... The ones are viable. We've got a lot of purples. Make sure we don't have any other sixes. Um, I want to keep that eight. So let's do... Because that will take out the red. Aha! Yeah, we've got a one, two, seven. I don't know. Got that one right there. And I'll have him play one more. There we go. Huzzah. New error locks. New memory, a new rubric. 
The orange light of the administrator fizzled, blinking occasionally, common for programs of his advanced age. His voice croaked as he asked his last question. Wait, is this talking... Do you understand? He fiddled with the light rings on his fingers as Prince considered everything he'd been told. He'd studied under his mentor for a hundred cycles, learning everything that could be learned about the repository and its many functions. In every sense that mattered, he did indeed understand. He also understood that the administrator hated him. That ego and pride would never allow him to accept Prince as his successor. He was old and fat and utterly useless, taking up space. Space that Prince had earned many times over. It was in that moment that Prince decided to de-res his mentor at the earliest opportunity. He knew his function. Ah, good times. You hand the disc back to Grish, who replaces it on Prince's back. Prince stretches, rolling his neck and smiles to himself. Ah, that's better turns to face you. So, what is your conclusion in this case? Um, hmm. Grish seems distracted. Cass in the vault is hiding something. You don't trust Sierra, the ambassador. Can we actually check the codex here? shelves. When you met this program, you knew nothing of them. Some programs are mysterious by choice. Others have mystery forced upon them by circumstance. There are truths to be uncovered here. Perhaps good reasons why those truths have been suppressed until now. Your new friend could be the key to tonight's events. Are they the victim? The participant? Or something else? The automata do not allow your kind within their territory, so your knowledge of the sprawl is limited. You don't begrudge them their privacy, but the alien nature of their society makes reading Sierra challenging. Locked up by Grish upon discovery of a crime, Sierra is understandably frustrated, but is his frustration in the face of a false accusation or at being caught? I would say it's too early to say, but out of those two, I would go for a cast, just because we don't know a whole lot about him. It's too early to say. Yes, quite. I respect your discres discretion in the matter. How long does this usually take? As long as it takes. Watch your tone, program. Prince tightens. Time is short, and it is important your work here is swift. I am, of course, comfortable to answer any questions you may have of me, or Grish here, before you resume your investigation. Ask as many as you like. How will Sierra's fellow programs react to his imprisonment? Prince laughs. <laughs> Not well, I'd imagine. As you no doubt gathered from your conversation with him, his kind, the automata, stand directly opposed to the sanctity of our civilization. They blasphemy and they mock, and they bring nothing to back up their outlandish claims. They refuse the existence of the users, but can provide no evidence of their absence. It is infuriating. Prince shrinks back a little from his tirade. More of his kind every day, making demands of the rest of us. I sincerely hope they are not foolish enough to start a fight over this. You are uncertain of his sincerity. How long before the explosion did Cass arrive with the item for storage? Barely enough time for us to register the arrival on our systems. Whoever did this, they knew ahead of time. They planned this. It's not good points to someone with information about our procedures. Oh, it's far worse than that. It implies the involvement of someone with information about the procedures of Kor. Prince winces. 
Whoever did this knows more about the comings and goings of our vault than I do. Why hide away all of this information, then? Did Ada not give you her usual speech about pruning and refining information? Prince smiles. We don't hide anything. We maintain society via careful control of data. It requires a delicate and respectful touch. There's information that can kill, Program. That doesn't sit well with you. No more questions. As you wish. Prince's head tilts slightly to the side, and he raises two fingers to his ear. An incoming message. Yes. Where? I see. He looks back to you, a determined flash to his eyes. It would appear we have an issue. Where? Prince appears shaken. My exterior guards tell me a known criminal has just landed on the building. Her name is Proxy. Have you encountered her before? The name rings a bell. It should. I believe she is wanted for a number of crimes, some of the worst imaginable. Grish tenses. She's a thief, a pirate. No respect at all for the work done here. Prince goes to his shelves and begins to pack a few items into a small bag. This is no coincidence. She must surely be involved in the theft tonight. I am moving to a secure location. Grish, you're coming with me. As you wish. Query, for my security, I'm afraid I can't tell you where I'm going. I will still be in the repository, but I will be unavailable for now. He finishes filling the bag up and seals it. I know your order doesn't engage in ongoing events, that you are forbidden from interfering, but I need you to reconsider that oath in service of myself, our work, and core. I need you to go up there and meet this interloper. I need you to find out her involvement in the vault explosion and prevent her from doing any more damage. When the time is right, I will return. I will ask questions. That's all I need for now. Prince chose to trust you. I trust you'll make the right decision if one must be made. He picks up the bag and heads for the elevator. Grish follows behind, disc in hand. She's on the landing pad, Query. I suspect some of your answers are up there with her. Digital Frontier achievement unlocked. Okay. So we still have, I'm still checking to make sure. Unknown locations. Library, vault, admin, office, landing pad. You only access an exit point to the building since Grish locked you in. Can I check the admin office with him not here? Prince wouldn't risk coming back here. Not yet. Just curious. The landing pad juts out of the side of the repository, like a grid bug clinging unsteadily to a mountain. Secure data crates. Observation achievement unlocked. You're starting to relate to grid bugs. You're no negotiator. You've never interacted with an active crime directly. The disciples of Tron investigate. You do not instigate. A yell tears through the rain. It breaks your process. Greetings, program. Unlocked proxy. She stands in the center of the platform. Behind her, a stolen recognizer takes off, soaring back into whichever corridor of the city it's usually hidden. 
She walks towards you. Her swagger implies casual charm, but you can sense a readiness to strike. Danger may not be present, but it's certainly pre-cached. I said greetings, program. A playful anger crosses her eyes. Do you have a name? You first. She laughs. <laughs> oh, is that the level of negotiation I can expect? How fantastic. I'm Proxy. I'm sure you've already been told a great deal about me. Well, why don't you give me your side of it? I'm a scoundrel. A ne'er-do-well. A good-for-nothing. Well, nothing except liberating the property of bigger scoundrels. She does a little sarcastic bow. I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. I think we're going to be very good friends, Detective. She's toying with you. Testing your boundaries. Before you ask me your questions and we get to negotiating what happens next, I have one pressing question, if I may. Shoot. It's less of a question than an observation, really. It unsettles me. My question is, why is this landing pad not secured? No guards, nothing preventing my landing, unloading. My code whispers trapped to me. I should have been surrounded by six angry programs with discs in hand the moment I set foot on such sacred ground. The word sacred was stressed, ringed for every available drop of sarcasm. No offense, but you're not as scary as the welcome I anticipated. Something happened here? Are the usual programs... occupied? There was an explosion. She nods, play acting taking new information on board, pondering, considering the nuances of this new revelation. Take a moment to observe for new things, okay. All in order to mock you for not realizing she was already aware, no doubt. An explosion tore apart your vault. And when someone like me sees that happen to a facility legendary for its security, I think to myself, maybe there's an opportunity there. And then, when I arrive and see that the guards have scattered elsewhere, I become certain that there's an opportunity. She gestures at you. You're all they had to send up to me. No doubt tightening security around the zealot prince. How is Grish, by the way? He's been helping my investigation. Oh, really? Growling at the suspects for you, I bet? We fought together in the war. I think we took wildly different lessons from our time together. The first sign of weakness. A little sadness crosses her face. It's gone in an instant, partitioned away under layers of bravado. I'm here because I see an opportunity. An opportunity to take something of my own while you're busy chasing around that other thief. Then why tell me? Because it's fun to have an audience. She smiles, but knows that's not a good enough answer. You're DOT. You investigate. You don't prevent. I'll be long gone before your case officially opens against me. You'll never find me. She's working very hard to appear confident. It's almost working. Confident, but out of boasts. Ask your questions, then. Tell me about the war. She looks down. Nothing to tell. A bad time. A time I'd rather forget.
the gift the users didn't grant us. No. Curse to remember everything that happens to us, outside of errors and glitches. Can you imagine what it must be to have the power to curate your memories like a user? She shakes her head. Tell me what you're going to steal. Data. Brent Spiner! There are great secrets being kept in this building. One in particular has infinite value. I need it. She smiles, empowered by the idea of it. How do you know it's here? Everything is here, Query. Ada's garden contains everything our society has ever created, and everything gifted to us by our creator. When Flynn created this grid, he left behind code which would empower a program in ways we cannot imagine, give them abilities beyond anything any program has ever possessed. I will find that code tonight. It's here somewhere. Where? I don't know. But I will. Are you going to hurt programs tonight? Only those I need to. Those that get in my way. Matter of fact, to the point. No bravado. Derezzing is easy for you. She gestures as if throwing her disc. It's all in the wrists. I do what I have to, to survive. She holds your eyes. No budge. Well, let's move on then. Good. I think I'm done talking. Her tone has shifted. The bravado of earlier has slipped away. She's finished playing. I'm going to walk past you now. I'm going to walk past you and into the repository. Once there, I will do what I have to to find what I came for. You need to get out of my way. She reaches to her back and draws her disc. It sparks and shivers with energy. You have no doubt she knows how to use it. I'm not your enemy. Good. Don't forget it. A bullying tone. You don't like it. You wonder how she'll use this power she covets. And then it happens. She moves fast, closing the gap between you and holding her disc to your neck. You feel the sizzle of it brush against you. You instinctively draw your own disc just like you were taught. You hold it millimeters from her neck. A few particles of her hair turn to light and drift off the platform, sliced by your own weapon. You're fast, program. She jumps back, adopting a throwing stance. You mirror her. Stop. I don't want to fight. I promise you, unless you lower your disc, there will be one. And it will be brief. She stands ready. A stalemate. This moment matters. A choice. Either way. Oh, God. Okay. I don't know. What would be the best way to handle this? But also we'd be interfering directly, which is against the tenets of the Order. Or, or the Disciples. I'm gonna see what happens when we drop the disc. You open your right hand, dropping the disc to the floor beneath you. It clanks metal against metal. I'm not your enemy proxy. 
My job is to investigate, not fight you. She smiles, replacing her disc on her back. I'm glad. Genuinely. She walks over, picks up your discs and disc and hands it back to you before brushing past the elevator. Next time I see you, Query, I will have the power of Flynn, and I'll remember the respect you showed me. The elevator doors close, and she's gone. The rain continues to smash the landing pad. You stand alone. You da did that which no DOT must ever do. You made a decision. It's becoming a dangerous habit tonight. It's so cold out here. Trusted protocol achievement unlocked. Okay, well, did we just... I don't know what we did. Okay, we'll check the admin office. You enter Prince's office. He and Grish are long gone. A beautiful desk sits in the middle of the office. Ornate light carvings reflect the circuitry of the first NCOM server, gesturing to the very earliest history of our kind. You suspect it's not something Prince uses often, more of a statement piece. Light flows across its surface, with particles floating upwards. It's more of an altar than a desk. Like everything else in the room, it's created to celebrate and elevate the users. Prince lives in their shadow, or from his perspective, perhaps in their light. You look around. This is a good opportunity to explore Prince's collection of user artifacts. Yes, this is what I wanted to do originally. Tucked away on a shelf is a thick, heavy book. Its cover shows an abstract landscape rendered in bright light and polygons, not dissimilar to views you've seen on the outskirts of the grid. In white block capitals, it says ARQX0711 beneath. Instruction manual. You flick through. This is a description of a machine, but specifically a machine for housing programs. You blink. This is a book about the machine in which the grid resides. Some kind of guide for users. This is profound. Learn more. I would like to know more. You skim back through the book to the introduction and begin to read. Jump aboard the ARQX0711 and be swept away to a future like none you can imagine. Congratulations on your new purchase. With the unique technology at the heart of NCOM computers, you can feel confident that no matter what the task, your hardware will be up to the challenge. So sit back, relax, and float above the flood of lesser hardware with the powerhouse you can take with you. Okay, let's go ahead and put that back. <laughs> you replace the book on the shelf, a little shaken by how close you just were to truths you cannot fathom. A shiver, and then your focus returns. You walk over to the shelves on the left. A small statue sits up on the shelf. It's simple, white plastic with printed blue la highlights, but you recognize it instantly as Tron himself and take it from the shelf. You've never seen a statue like this before. Intricate hinges attach his limbs. You can fold and move them in a simulation of movement. Is this a user toy? If so, do the users know the story of Tron too? You were raised with the stories of Tron. His fight for the users, his eventual disappearance. The disciples of Tron model themselves on his example. Seeking truth and justice, standing up to power, new or old. Tron was programmed to fight for the users, but the DOT fight only for the truth. You'd like to meet him one day, if he still functions. You place the statue, delicately, back where you found it. You walk over to the shelves on the right. A slightly crumpled piece of paper is tucked between two other boxes. You pull it out. It's an article of some kind, and you read it. 
Renaissance Man by Ethan Romero. The first thing I learned about Edward Dillinger was his taste in helicopters. As I sat waiting for him on the rooftop of One Moss Street, I was startled to see a jet black helicopter fly past the window, illuminated decadently with red strip lighting. My subject would later explain to me that he found the red glow soothing after a long day staring at computer screens, but to me, it was pure showmanship. This doesn't make a lot of sense. Oh, I love this, because that was the kind of chopper that he had in the original Tron. You skip forward a few paragraphs. Dillinger laughs, his English lilt giving an impression of a man out of time. A man from a more sophisticated past, perhaps? Of course, this is an illusion. My subject is a man of the future, a great inventor, famous for his pioneering work in artificial intelligence. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not Dillinger talking. He waves any celebration away, of course. For him, his proudest work is in the field of arcade video games. He aspires to be an artist in the field, and envisions a day where these electronic fancies are as celebrated as poetry, music, and film. I chuckle at this, but he seems ardent. You've never heard of this man. You skip a few more paragraphs ahead. Dillinger has recently crafted his most important invention of all, a son. I ask him if Eddie Jr. shares his inventive streak, and this is Killian Murphy's character in Legacy. He assures me that Eddie is already showing an aptitude for mathematics and computing. He's a born leader, too, with a ruthless command of the sandbox. He's running rings around his kindergartner teachers. Dillinger tells me the boy doesn't suffer fools gladly, like father, like son. There's only so much psychophancy you can stomach at a time, especially for a user you've never heard of. You return the clipping to its nook on the shelf. Blinking device. The device blinks with red light in the corner, and you pick it up. Small buttons cover its surface. The blinking light radiates from a tiny screen. You carefully press one, and a simple image of the screen blinks to the right. Another button and the image blinks left. Curious. You press another button, and the image blinks up the screen. You realize these buttons indicate movement. You press another button to the right, and a smaller image blinks out of the first. This is some kind of representation. A simulation. Is the first image a program, or the other a, and the other a disc being thrown? Why would Prince have such a thing? Why would anyone bother to make it? That's cool, like them trying to figure things out from the user point of view. You return that device to its corner, utterly confused. You walk over to the shelves on the left. You reach for a jacket hanging in the corner. An odd garment, gray chest and cuffs, with red sleeves. The collar looks vaguely military, and two large pockets flank the chest. A practical item, I believe that's the jacket Flynn wore when he got sent to the grid in the first Tron. You've never seen anything like it. No light, and the material feels alien, otherworldly. Did this belong to a user? Someone important enough for Prince to have it in his collection? You poke the strange clasps, presumably designed to hold it together. Ever the detective, you reach carefully into a pocket. Your hand brushes over some small cards. You pull them out. Duplicates. Each one printed in bright red. Flynn's Arcade. Huh. Wow, that's basically like God's jacket. They <laughs> just... Alright, you replace the jacket carefully. you rather nothing was out of place for Prince's return. You take one last look at the place. Next time you're here... You'll see Prinz back at that window. Maybe. He probably won't let you look at his toys again. Alright guys, well, um, we let an intruder in. Don't know how that's going to work out or what the consequences of that are going to be, but I guess we will find out maybe in the next episode. Hope you all have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help, and we'll see you next time.
Later days, everyone. <laughs>